In this video, I will introduce DC to DC converters to you. To begin with, DC to DC converters are power electronic converters which convert fixed DC voltage input to variable DC voltage output. These DC to DC converters, they are available in various types depending on their input output voltage relationship. They are familiarly known as buck converter, boost converter and buck boost converter. In fact, these converters are used in various applications. Let us look at some of those applications. In the course of this video, I will be discussing the applications and then the techniques that are used to derive the variable output voltage and then the way the circuit is synthesized for meeting the output voltage requirement. I will take a simple example and then demonstrate how the elements are arranged. Finally, I will summarize what we have seen so far. So the applications of DC to DC converters, they include modern day LED lamp applications. They are familiarly known as LED drivers or they are used in a battery charging. It could be a laptop uh, battery charging or it could be the battery that is used in a photovoltaic system. There, the step down DC to DC converters are required to meet the battery voltage requirement to meet the input output voltage to match the input voltage output requirements and they are again used to supply the input power supply to the processors which are used in laptops or which are used in mobile phones as well. So these are few applications of DC to DC converters. I will take a simple example where the input voltage and the output voltage requirements are specified. I have taken a case where the input voltage is 12 volts and the output voltage is 6 volts for easier understanding. The load could be a lamp or it could be the shape resembles a speaker. Therefore, let us consider a speaker. But for the time being, the input voltage output requirement that matching is what we are looking into. Now, what are the techniques that are familiarly employed or that are already used? What are their features? We will look at them. To begin with, there could be a simple potential divider which can be inserted between the input and the output which is going to look like this. We will be having a resistance of value R1 and there could be another resistance of value R2. Obviously, the ground terminal or the negative terminal will be connected. Simple mathematics would tell us that R1 will be equal to R2 for the voltage to be divided equally between the two resistors so that we are in a position to get 6 volts at the output. But the problem is there will be a lot of potential drop across this R1. Therefore, power dissipated across R1 is going to be enormously high. As a result, the efficiency is going to come down. More importantly, we have taken a case of 12 volt to 16 volt voltage conversion ratio. In case the voltage that is required, the load end is low, let's say 3 volts or 1.1 volts or even lower then the efficiency is going to be further dropping down because of the fact that the remaining voltage other than what is going to be fed to the load that will be dropped across the resistor and that will, just, that will lead to power dissipation. As a result, the efficiency is going to drop, drop down drastically and it mainly depends on the conversion ratio which is not preferable. We want a converter or we want an arrangement which is going to give us the required voltage conversion ratio at very good efficiencies. So potential divider arrangement fails. Similarly, there are other linear converters also. They are actually called as shunt and series voltage regulator which will again use a series pass transistor followed by a suitable drive arrangement which in turn will be supplied from Again, a potentiometer divider arrangement followed by a Zener diode network. So, you will be having a voltage sensing network and then uh, that will in turn drive the series pass transistor. So, this arrangement depends on series and shunt configuration, but essentially the elements are going to be same. Main element is going to be the series pass transistor. So, this element will be taking care of the voltage difference requirements which means 
if 12 volt has to be dropped down to 6 volt there will be a drop of 6 volt across the series pass element once again this network this technique is going to be lossy in addition to that in case i want a voltage let's say 12 volt to 11 volts that may not be possible because the series pass element needs some minimum voltage drop across it for operation operating purposes therefore that that voltage is called as dropout voltage but nowadays there are very good low dropout voltage regulators still they are lossy still the efficiency is going to be dependent on the conversion ratio therefore this method is also not preferable this is one of the reasons why people adopted the switched mode power supply or the switching technique because in both the potential divider and the series or shunt voltage method they are linear in nature the elements are going to be lossy elements voltage is going to be dropped across the elements throughout the operation circuit operation therefore another way of achieving the voltage requirement is going to be the switch mode converter wherein the switch which is denoted as s over here is going to be inserted between the supply v in or 12 volt input and the output load which is the 6 volt and by repeatedly turning on and turning off the switch we may be in a position to get the required output voltage so essentially we are looking at an output voltage from an in output voltage of 6 volts from an input voltage of 12 volts by turning on and turning off the switch so if we try to obtain a very simple plot of the output voltage versus time when the switch is closed the load will see a voltage which is same as input that is 12 volts in this case and when the load is going to be when the switch is going to be closed it will be 12 volt when the switch is open the circuit will be open load voltage will be zero therefore we have a case of turning on the switch for some duration and turning off the switch for some other duration we do this periodically or repeatedly therefore we have a case where the switch is going to be turned on and turned off in a periodic manner therefore it is called as switched mode circuit the main advantage is in a practical switch the power that is dissipated across it when it is on is going to be very very minimal similarly when the switch is going to be off again the power dissipated is going to be minimal reason being when the switch is off there won't be any current through the switch when the switch is on ideally the voltage drop across it is zero practically the voltage drop is going to be very very minimal as a result this switching method is going to be efficient one of the main drawbacks of linear power supplies are now overcome but this circuit may not work the way we want because the load needs a constant DC voltage whereas we are having a chopped DC voltage so that chopped volt DC voltage has to be filtered because it's a voltage the straightforward approach would be to include a capacitor in parallel with the load so that the capacitor is going to filter out all the ripples as a result one can expect a constant voltage across the load however when the switch is on voltage across the capacitor will be same as v in whereas when the switch is on voltage across the capacitor will try to change suddenly as a result the capacitor will throw up some inrush currents or it will discharge you can understand that way because switch is off voltage across this capacitor is changing suddenly as a result there is going to be the transient inrush current which may damage the switch that damaging has to be taken care must be avoided that can easily be done because we know that the inrush currents are causing the damages therefore these inrush currents have to be somehow eliminated again a passive element will help us in limiting the inrush currents we know that inductor opposes sudden change in current 
that is what is damaging the switch therefore placing an inductor before the switch will avoid this inrush currents we are very close to achieving what we want the load voltage will be a constant dc voltage inrush current problem because of the introduction of capacitor is going to be avoided by adding an inductor however because we added an inductor when the switch is closed there will be current through the inductor which i indicate as il this il will see an interruption when s is turned on and off in a periodic manner when the state of switch changes the state of il tends to change but inductor is not preferring that inductor will not allow sudden change in current therefore there has to be a path for the inductor current to safely decay that safe path is provided by another element which is the diode now when the switch is on the inductor current il will start flowing let's say from left to right through the inductor and when this switch is opened there is interruption in the path however there is a path alternative path through the diode so the inductor current circulates or free wheels through the diode d as a result this diode d is also known as free wheeling diode because it is taking part in circulating the energy stored in the inductor it helps in free wheeling the stored energy in the inductor therefore it is called as free wheeling diode now this circuit is complete perfect the load voltage will be a constant dc voltage which will look like the way we want when we plot v not with respect to time the load voltage is going to be a constant dc voltage this dc voltage will be the required dc voltage now if we want to change the magnitude of the output voltage that is what we want we want variable dc voltage if we want the magnitude to change we have to turn on and turn off the switch in a different way the on duration and off duration that has to be adjusted those details we will discuss in the subsequent videos essentially because the switch is a semiconductor device the loss across the switch p switch is going to be very very less passive elements again they don't consume any energy no power is going to be dissipated across them therefore but for the stray elements stray resistance in the inductor the esr of the capacitor those are going to be very very minimal as a result the energy dissipated in l and the energy dissipated in c will also be less hence the efficiency of the power converter is going to be better much much better when compared to the other linear options which are the other convert other uh, arrangements which we came across the potential divider arrangement and the series and shunt voltage regulator arrangement so this network which is having a uh, four additional elements the switch that's the first element which we added second element was the capacitor third element was the inductor and fourth element happens to be the diode so this network consisting of two semiconductor devices and two passive elements in between the supply and the load is called as the buck converter this is how the circuit of a buck converter is synthesized we place the elements at appropriate places for doing appropriate job that's more important this is the way we synthesize power converter circuits so to summarize switched mode is much more efficient way more ahead of the 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 linear counterparts mainly because of the power dissipation which is negligible across the semiconductor elements and the passive elements and by using the switching devices namely the diodes and the switches in combination with inductors and capacitors we can arrive at various topologies which are named as 
boost converter, buck boost converter and other converter topologies. Of course, we had come across buck converter and it introduces circuit to you. That's all. On that note, I'll end my video. If you have doubts, you can mail me. I'll be glad to respond to your queries. Thanks for watching.